Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nadja. If you're new, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, 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 and you're going to want to share this, okay? It's going to be quick. It's going to be simple and to the point, um, but it's going to be something that is specifically for someone, and uh, I do believe that this is something that's going to be for many of you. Each situation and circumstances might be a little different, but the whole gist of what I'm going to say I think it's going to resonate with many of you, okay? First, I would like to remind you that if God has ever spoken to you in reference to uh, nudging you to come and do coaching with me, most definitely this is the time. This is the time to do so. The pick me up sessions, which are now 30 minute sessions, have been sliced in half in reference to price. So Christian coaching, which is no different than counseling your life, okay, based on biblical principles. And it's going to be that way through the rest of 2023. Okay, so you have now the opportunity to come and meet with me in person for 30 minutes. And so that we can start gathering certain things together that need to be in position to get you prepared for 2024. All right, I can't wait to see you there. Links are in the description. So today we're going to be talking about Lot's disobedient wife. Lot's disobedient wife. And the purpose of talking about Lot's disobedient wife is that God gave me this revelation in reference to this. And I know that there are many of you who have experienced this, are experiencing this. And it was important for me to write this down and be obedient when he told me because the detriment, okay, that could be attached to disobedience in this area um, is not something that I think that many of us should take lightly. I think it is a very important topic. And so without further ado, let me just jump on in. Okay. Uh, Lot's wife did not have to die. She did not have to die. She was given a choice to choose between um, obedience and life and disobedience and death. Many of us are, are currently in situations where God has given us specific directions about something that um, we know we're not supposed to be connected to or not supposed to stay in, not continue to think in this particular way. Whatever this situation may be in your life, of course, may be different than someone else's. But I'm going to use the example of you knowing that you're not supposed to be connected to a certain person. Um, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, so let me finish my notes first and then I'm going to go into it, okay? She had basically followed her husband into the wilderness. She had the same problem the Israelites did in the wilderness. As in their hearts, they turned back to Egypt. Okay, that's in Acts 7.39. Just like the Israelites, she was destroyed. Okay, just like the Israelites, she ended up being destroyed because of her disobedience. Lot's wife, she personified the classic wisdom for where your treasure is, there your heart will also. There your heart will be also. Wherever your treasure, whatever it is that you think, or wherever you think the treasure is, Wherever you think the promise is, your heart will also be. So even if you think that the treasure or the promise is sitting in or uh, connected to a certain situation or to a particular person, and even if it's a whole lie, your heart is also going to be in that place. Even if it is wrong, which is why... The word says that our hearts are deceitful, okay? Jesus used her as an example of someone who started the right way, but looked back because she was not completely willing to give up her old ways to follow God in obedience. So put yourself in that situation. For whoever this is for, you are currently in a situation, in a position where you know that you're trying to keep the door cracked in a certain area in your life. And it may be an area that God may have already spoken to you about and specifically said, 
No. He's already given you dreams. He's already told you in your spirit that this particular person is not for you. I'm using this as an example, but you can use it interchangeably in reference to what God, whatever else God may have spoken to you about a specific thing. The disobedience in this hour in regards to this, there is no time to make these type of mistakes. There is no time to make these type of decisions that are outside of where God has called for you to be. As it said, she was given a choice. Obedience, which led to life. And that could be in, in your situation, obedience leading to life, not physical life or death, but life in reference to you being able to progress. You being able to live out your, your purpose and receive the true promises of God, not just existing. Okay. She was given the opportunity to take life if she obeyed. And for her, she chose disobedience, which, which caused her death, physical death. But with you, if you make the choice to choose disobedience, then there could be a death in your, there could be death, spiritual death, okay? You will experience a spiritual death. And if you're spiritually dead, you're not connected to the Holy Spirit. You're not receiving from the Holy Spirit. You're kind of just, like I said, existing. You're not really in a position where you're even able to operate based on what the word of God says, because you've now compromised and put yourself in a space outside of where God can even use you anymore. Let's just say that it is a person. If you're keeping the door cracked in reference to a particular person that is not supposed to be in your life and you're wondering why when this person looks and seems like they are a great catch, they're attractive, they make great money, they're a good parent, you know, as you check things off the list from what you can see with your physical eyes and judge by your flesh, they seem like the perfect situation. Even if they may not have this perfect relationship with God, you're looking at it as if this person could be someone that you could teach, you could help mold, you could pray for, you can, you know, help put them in position. And they may even be someone who is willing to make that change for you. But the most important part is that you cannot see ahead of God. Okay. So what, what may look like a perfect opportunity for you to uh, make steps towards could definitely be the detriment of your promise, the detriment of your purpose. Because the, the worst decision that you can make in your life, one of the worst decisions you can make in your life is connecting with the wrong person uh, in marriage. Okay? Connecting with the wrong person in marriage. So just like with Lot or Lot's wife, there was no time Okay, the angels came to, to, to take the family to safety. There was no time to sit back and wait. There was no time to say, hey, let me think about this. I don't know if I want to leave. There was no time. The only thing that they had to do was follow the angels, follow the direction that was given to just look forward, follow and not turn back around not look back at your past and decide or you know even consider your past as an option okay that is the time that we're in right now we've come too far and too close to what what is actually about to take place your purpose 
the entry, the doorway, the things that God's promised you, we come too close to that to stop and make a decision to go the opposite way. It's, it's detrimental. Because especially for those of you who are in ministry and leadership, this is not just about you. This is also about the people that are connected to you. So the choices that you make not only affect you and your life and your purpose, the path that you're walking, but it's going to also affect the people that are attached to you. Those that God has already set up to receive what you are going to be um, operating in. So I, I pray that this is coming through as clearly as, as you know, I possibly can make it. And you will know if this is for you. Because I feel as though it's something God has already spoken to you about. It's something that God has already said no to you about. He's already warned you about it. And I feel like this is almost a let me reiterate to you. If you do this, what's going to happen? Which means that more than likely you are someone that the enemy has been implanting thoughts into your head, trying to get you to focus on what you don't have, what has not come and focus more on what's in front of you. Okay. The enemy wants you to focus on what's in front of you, not be a person of faith and focus on what is not yet seen. So there may be a person, a situation, an opportunity that is in front of you, that is tangible, that you can see and say, this looks good. Why, why can't I just give it a try? Or how about I just tread the waters lightly Keep the door open, communicate, but not make any moves and just see if this is what I think it is. The Lord is saying that this promise is not going to come to you as long as there is something else or someone else parked in its place. He's not going to bring up your purpose to, to the front of your house. And wait for you to move the car out of the parking space or out of the garage. That space needs to already be open and in expectation of his promise coming. His promise is only going to come through you and your building of your faith in knowing that your father is going to do what he said he's going to do. Although it may tarry, it will come. Think about that and keep that in the back of your mind. Although it may tarry, the promise is going to come. Now, as a personal like input in regards to this, I had to retrain my mind coming out of new age because at that time I was someone who was doing tarot, receiving messages from familiar spirits, going to psychics, looking for answers in regards to relationships and receiving these messages and being excited about what they were telling me, even though they were lies and they never came to pass. So what I had to do when being born again and coming over to Christ and believing my father was going to take care of me is to not allow what the devil did not give me to now move over into my mindset of how I feel about my God blessing me with what he said he was going to give me. I never want to put myself in a position where I believe the devil's lies 
that would make me think, oh, you're doing the same thing you did when you was in New Age, believing for something that you're never going to see happen. And then subconsciously, you don't even realize that you've kind of in the back of your in the back of your mind, you kind of like put away the idea of the promise. Almost like, OK, well, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, I'm going to be OK. Instead of keeping the mind and your tongue confessing what God said you're going to have, not necessarily confessing it to other people, but confessing it to yourself in prayer and speaking it out of your mouth, casting down any thoughts of it not coming. These are the things that I am still even working on. Not allowing the enemy to put thoughts into my head that then, you know, travel down into my heart and you start being led by your heart and how you feel and what you think that you need and desire rather than being led by the spirit. Being led by the things that God has already confirmed being led by the things that God has already shown you are not for you. This is a very vital position. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This information is so vital to the next phase of your walk. This information is very vital to the next um the next role that you're going to play. The things that you are trying to stay attached to are like a last effort of the enemy to trip you up so that you not only delay what God is going to do, but possibly even ruin it in general, completely ruin it in general. Because as I said, in the situation with Lot's wife, if, if you know, when, when she made a decision not to follow, her results were, it was over. There was no do-overs. So you're in a position where if you walk in disobedience right now in reference to this particular situation that God's already spoken to you about, he's already given you grace in regards to it. which means that he's probably already said no more than one time, but you keep going back. You keep allowing your mind to keep revisiting the idea of whatever the situation is. There's only so many times that the Lord is going to allow you to play him for a fool or play with his grace before the repercussions of those decisions catch up with you. Been there, done that. And I am not trying to do it anymore. Okay, so when God gave me this word, I knew that there's gonna be a group of you, you're gonna know exactly what God is saying. So many of us, not even just women, but men also. We want to be, we want to be married. We want our partners. But a lot of times we don't realize, especially based on the calling that is attached to our lives, that being married is truly not what we even think it is to God. Being married has such a bigger weight in regards to our calling than the reasons that we want to be married, which is why, Which is why it is so much bigger than just, you know, make sure you marry another believer. Okay. 
literally you could marry another believer but because you're expected to walk a certain walk because of your calling marrying that believer could be as detrimental if not worse than you marrying an unbeliever I'm just trying to get you guys to see and understand um, the importance of this particular word. It's definitely not one to take lightly. And as I said before, I have, I have experienced this. And the enemy will try to put thoughts like of this person of this situation, of this circumstance in your mind over and over and over and over again. And so you begin to think and believe that because it is repeatedly in your mind and you're continuously thinking about it, then that must mean it's the choice that you should make. When you must test everything because the enemy is what's putting the thoughts in your mind especially in the way that you know it's the enemy, God already told you no. God is not going to change his mind. God is not a earthly father that says, no, I don't think that's a good idea. But then continuously you're like, but I want to, I want to, I want to. And then our earthly fathers are going to be like, okay, I guess you can do it. Go ahead. Now, if God does that to you, which he has done that in scripture, where they continuously wanted a king, they wanted a king, where he just gave them what they wanted and they realized it was the worst decision ever. You don't want to get to that point because that's what would happen. You keep on trying to move in a certain direction, even though God said, no, 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 no. And he gives you over to what you want. He lets you have what you've been begging for. And then you want to blame God. God, why did you let this happen? Well, you didn't want to be obedient. You didn't want to listen. So I let you walk in your disobedience and you got what came with it. As it says, she started the right way. She started out the right way. And she started out the right way by, by leaving, by following, um, going in the direction of going into the wilderness. She started out the right way by following these angels and doing what they said do. But along the way, she started allowing the thoughts of the enemy to cause her to feel somewhat disconnected from the things that she was walking away from. Not wanting to put those things down, not wanting to give up an old mindset, an old lifestyle. And it caused her to turn back and look God is saying do not even turn around to look for some of you that means don't even reconsider certain things in your mind cast them down don't even accept a certain text delete it or block it don't even receive a certain call if you know it's an area of weakness and that you might be tempted you're either going to choose obedience in life or disobedience in death. This message is so near and dear to my heart um, because I'm so grateful that the Lord has given me 
numerous opportunities to um, to get it right. Numerous opportunities to hear and do. Okay. For many of you, you may not realize or recognize how hard it is to walk this path. Specifically in reference to what I do, the influence that I have, the things that God has called me to do, they're not easy by a long shot, okay? It's, it's not for the weak. I'm just gonna say that. And my particular struggles were always, Lord, I wanna do the right thing. I don't wanna miss it. So for me, it was never a, an intention to be disobedient. For me, it was always, okay, I, I, I'm not quite sure you're saying this, so let me just go and do this, and then I'm sure you'll tell me no. I'm sure that you'll show me no. But the crazy thing about it is, I know that he may have already said no, but it's like, okay, I, I, need, a, I need another confirmation. I need to know for sure you, you said no. God is saying, you better take what I'm giving you and know for sure of what I'm doing. And if you're not sure, don't even play with it. Okay. If it's, if it's a certain person, you don't have to do anything. Like when I, what I mean by that is if, if it's a, a man, a, a, a woman, and you're concerned about, oh, if I don't test the waters in this area that... I could miss my husband or I could miss my wife. That's not the, that's not an option. If it's something from God, you're not going to miss it. If it's something from God, you're not going to miss it. You're going to know there's not going to be any confusion. There's not going to be any um, wondering if, you know, you're going to know. You're not going to have to chase behind anything. You're going to know. Okay. So my battery is dying. I didn't expect for this to be long. This was supposed to be a short word. I'm going to come right back and do another quick word that God gave me. Probably won't be any more than five or ten minutes. So if you see me in the same outfit, just know back to back. All right, guys. Love you. See you soon.